Hello everyone, this is Andrew here with Spark Finance. And when you're starting your first job or you're transferring over into a new position, there's a lot of turmoil around that. And at the same time, you really have to figure out what are you gonna do for your retirement planning with your new position? So you wanna set that up as soon as possible, right away. But the problem is, it's, it's a bit difficult to do that, right? When you set it up right away, you get it done and you don't really have to think about it much. But in the beginning, there are a lot of different options and advice that is out there. And I was in this dilemma myself. And I tried to look at all of the research that was out there to see, you know, what are the best options for your retirement plan? What do financial experts usually recommend? So one thing with this is that you have to see where you are on the financial spectrum and what you're trying to do, what your goals are. If you want to get financial independence and retire at an early age, you're going to want to be more aggressive in what you're doing here or maybe put money in your own personal accounts rather than the retirement. But if you just want to retire at 62 to 66 years old and have a nice nest egg there for you, you'd be making sure that you put money into the retirement fund, but maybe you don't have to go quite as aggressive and just kind of do the average of what is recommended. So you have to see on that range, the most aggressive versus the bare minimum, where you wanna be and how it fits into your everyday expenses and how much you can put towards retirement versus what you need on a day-to-day -day basis. So I was thinking about this and why isn't everyone actually utilizing their company's retirement plan? I mean, the company gives that to you so that you can take advantage of it, right? Well, they did a recent study and they found that only 43% of US employees we're actually utilizing the company's retirement plan. So this is, this is a big problem here because this is the best way to save money over the long haul for your retirement and a lot of people are completely not partaking in it, right? They're missing out. And so maybe if you have a little bit more information about it, you'd feel more comfortable to be able to go in and make the right choices. The retirement plan is a form of compensation that your employer is giving you. So you have other forms of compensation, whether it's different benefits or your salary itself. If you're not utilizing your retirement plan, you might as well just take less of a salary because that is in effect what it is doing, right? That is compensation that is being delivered to you. So the main benefit of using these retirement accounts in particular, they are tax favorable accounts. That gives them a lot of advantages that you wouldn't have if you tried to create a normal savings or investing or brokerage account where you would save money. Now, the types of accounts that are involved with this, there's a few of them here. The main ones are the 401k, the Roth 401k, which is if you're working at a private corporation, and if you're working at a nonprofit, it's called a 401b. So they just like to use some weird terminology there to try and confuse people as usual. So if you are setting up your kind of your own outside of the company retirement plan, you have the choice of an IRA, which is an individual retirement account, or a Roth IRA, which is another form of retirement account. And I'll go into the different structure a little bit later. But primarily here, we're looking at what you can do with your employer. Now keep in mind, these are just the custodial accounts that you will be using. They are not the actual investments that will be placed inside of those accounts. And that's another important aspect of this. So to start off with, they have the 401k, which is the main way that people that are working for a private corporation would like to get into the retirement planning. So you have the employer that delivers you this account and they give certain options that you can invest in within it. Now this is the main investment vehicle and most employers allow you to put up a certain amount of money or percentage of your paycheck into this retirement account. And that's very important there and it also gives you the ability to see where you are financially and how much on your spectrum that you can give as a percentage of your paycheck to the retirement account. On top of that, and this is the huge benefit, most companies do a match up to a certain amount. So let's say it would be four or $6,000, they'll match up to whatever you put in. So if you put in $1, they'll match maybe 50 cents on that dollar. So if you put in $4,000, they'll put in $2,000. And that's the closest thing that we can get to free money in investing here. And that is why the 401k is such a good investment vehicle to compound money over time. 
Now, when you're looking at this, this is where you need to look at the long-term goals again for your current financial situation to determine how much you should put into your retirement account. I mean, after all, this is coming out of your paycheck. You could be using this money going out to party every day instead, but you need to save some for retirement. The average suggestions are to save between 3% to 10%, depending on where you are again with your life expectance, uh, life expenses. <laughs> So you can then increase that percentage annually as you make more money to get to the net goal of saving between 10 and 15% of your paycheck towards your retirement accounts. That's the ultimate goal here. So if you start with 3%, you can up at one, two, 3% a year if you need to, to make sure if you're starting over with a lower wage, you can eventually get up to the amount that you need to properly retire safely. And so if you are trying to match like that 401k you want to do what the employer will will match you so if they do a match of 50 cents for every dollar up to six thousand dollars match all of that up to six thousand dollars as soon as you are able to that is the most important thing and when they say you want to max out your 401k this is what they mean you're going up to the contribution limit that you can where you're still getting additional money from the company itself that gives a lot of time for your money to compound. And it's very important here. You wanna invest as early as possible, but still have money in liquid savings, just in case you might lose your job for a myriad of reasons. You wanna try and also build up savings to cover at least six months of living expenses. So keep that in mind when you're basically setting up your percentages for the contributions. Now, some people go all out in this and they'll put 20% of their income straight into the 401k their goal is to have millions of dollars when they retire. They don't really care that they're going to have to barely survive on any money right now because 40 years later, they're going to be living like kings. So that's one way to do it. And you could do that option. But again, we're going to go with the, the basis of, of what you need to be to have the most stable. That's the extreme there. So when you're the big tax advantage of the 401k is that you actually get money reduced from your gross income to what your taxable income would be. So if you contribute $4,000 into your 401k, you subtract $4,000 from your gross income and you're actually potentially in a lower tax bracket and have to pay less taxes. This is a tax favored account, right? So that's the huge advantage there. Now the problem with the 401k, and there are a few negatives, right? You have limited investment options. The company that you have They'll give you a list of different ones you can invest in. They're usually mutual funds or ETFs. And some of those will have different kinds of fees, but you can't just go into like any particular equity or stock or anything that you want or cryptocurrency. You have to choose from those listed options. You also have a penalty if you try and take money out of the 401k before retirement, you can pay up to 10% of a, as a penalty. And then on top of that, you'll have to pay income tax on the money that you're taking out. So you really don't wanna take out money early from the 401k. So you have to choose from all of those investment options, right? So let's take a look at the, the different investment options. In particular, maybe it would make sense to do these ETFs, exchange traded funds, instead of the mutual funds. You wanna look at the expense ratios on all of the available investment options. And you want the lowest expense ratio possible. Most specialty funds listed on there, some of them will have different objectives of like your target date for retirement or something like that. Most of those will underperform the S&P 500 stock index, which is just a benchmark of how the overall stock market is doing. So if they're gonna underperform that over the long term, why not just go with something that's a lower fee that basically has a better or equal return? And that is why a lot of financial advisors say you should go into an S&P 500 index fund ETF. That's what most of them recommend here. And so when you're looking at the ones with the lowest fees, instead of being charged a one or 2% fee, you should be looking for 0.03% or 0.02%. Now that difference doesn't sound like a lot, like 2% or 0.02%, but over time, that is a lot. So if you look at, if you had, let's say $10,000 in your 401k balance and you put in $5,000 a year for the next 30 years, that 2% fee would actually cost you $153,000 over the course of that time period. So it adds up over time. Now there's other retirement accounts. You have the Roth 401k and the Roth IRA or a traditional 
IRA, Individual Retirement Account is what it stands for. So when you contribute to your company's 401k match limit, stop putting more money in right when you hit that limit of, they say $6,000 is all you could put in there or $3,000. Don't go above that. You match up to that on the 401k. Then you transfer over to the Roth IRA or Roth 401k. If your company has it, you use the Roth 401k. If they don't, you can create your own account on on different websites or brokerages for a your own Roth IRA. Now, this retirement account is taxed at the time you earn the money rather than the 401k, which is taxed at the end when you take money out. And this is a major advantage because when you start out working, you're gonna be in a much lower tax bracket than you are you know, when you're in your 60s and you have decades of experience working at different companies and learning different skills and assets that you've, you've been learned or taught over, ta- over time. So that has a huge advantage when you're looking at it over the long haul. And the, the Roth 401k is actually expected to earn more money than the 401k from that basis. Now, the beautiful thing about the 401, the Roth 401k, and you have to make sure you get all these names right, you can take out money from this account, unlike a 401k. There is no additional penalty as long as it's not more than the original amount you put in. So if you put $3,000 in in a year, you can take out that original $3,000 with no 10% penalty and no extra taxes. That's pretty big because all of the money that you made is still in there compounding. So you can put anywhere between three and 10% into your 401k, right? This is a little bit of a recap. And you, you do that up until the company match. Then what you do is you increase that contribution rate at least 1% per year until you can get to that company's match if you're not able to do it from the start. Then your 401k or 401b is set and you don't really have to worry about it. And we talked about putting it into the ETF with the lowest fee. Now, once you get the company match, then you turn the rest of your percentage into the Roth 401k from your job or personally create a Roth IRA. So when you do that, you keep adding the percentage to your Roth after the 401k match percentage until your full total percentage of your paycheck is between 10 and 15%. That is the ultimate goal here. If you can get 10% of your paycheck saving for retirement, that's great. So keep in mind with this method, you should be able to kind of compound your money over time. By the time the average person is 30, they should have around $100,000 in their retirement account. And when you get to about 60 years old or 66, you should have eight to 10 times your salary in that account for your retirement, which is a nice little nest egg there for you to retire and enjoy your later years. Now, if you're starting a new job, make sure the first thing you do is get this retirement plan set up with everything that we discussed here. That's one of the most important things is starting out early and just letting it compound. Now, if you're a high roller on the other end, you know, the stuff we said here, it applies to your your average person. But if you're a high roller, you should look at the contribution limits that you have for each of these different type of retirement accounts, because that is an important thing. There's between like four and $6,000 limits on some of these accounts that you can't put more than that in per year. Now, your average person making the average seller in the United States is usually not gonna surpass those. But if you have more income coming in, you need to look at those different limits. And if you wanted to make an individual retirement account, there are also some items like an annual earnings limit that you have to keep in mind there where you're not able to have those tax benefited accounts if you're making over a certain income level. So I hope that helps you guys just kind of focus on what the ideas that are out there for the retirement planning and what you should do for it. If you want to check out other news, business, economics, personal finance, and investing, check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Have a great one. This is Andrew with Spark Finance, and I'm out.